Who likes Marmite? Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, the reason I've put Tech Unplugged on there, right, is because it work. It did work before. Ah. Welcome to Disneyland, ladies and gentlemen. This is not the real world, according to some people, all right? Now, I've got one other quick thing to do as part of setting up. I'm going to try and do three demos later on. Does everybody know what the demo gods are? Okay. I am going to make an offering to the demo gods. So, offering to the demo gods. Now, let me see if this will work now. Oh, you know what? It was so working before. I'm going to blame Windows 10. Right. <clears throat> this is me. I love to talk about technology, okay? Really, um, because I learn more from you guys than you learn from me. So if you want to talk about anything cool technology related, hit me up on Twitter. Um, I make videos on Pluralsight. Um, <clears throat> I also do a, a weekly um, tech news roundup podcast. I'm going to do a random sample, right? Gentleman in the corner with the uh, shaved head and the jacket on. Have you ever listened to the podcast? Yeah. It's pretty good. Is it, it's awesome, right? It's awesome. This guy's on the podcast with me. <laughs> but if you want to keep up to date on technology news, I do recommend it. Standard disclaimers here, right? Um, oh, I'm not going to get used to this. Rick, do me a favor, please. Can you be my glamorous assistant? I, I want it to be Rick because I'm going to get him to do something in a minute anyway. Um, I'm going to say right arrow key monkey if you don't mind. So first up, number one, I'm absolutely not an expert in anything. And as a result, I don't have any answers. But come on a quick journey with me here, OK? Um, as you progress through life, right, the things that you do and the things that you have tend to get better and better and better, right? So your first job, I mean, you might have fond memories of it, but it's a bit naff compared to the cool job that you've got now. Your first car, unless you've got wealthy parents, I don't know, and that's totally cool. Your first car tends to be a bit rubbish. You get a better car, you get a better car, you get a better car. And I don't necessarily mean faster. It might be more environmentally friendly, if that's your thing. But you progress throughout life, right? If you just bear with me and, you know, stay with me for a second, I want to show you where I live, okay? Because, you know, the first place that you live is a bit naff, and then it gets better and better. Um, where I live right now awesome maestro. That's where I live, okay? <laughs> I live and breathe in the cloud, predominantly the public cloud, okay, because where's Mr. OpenStack? Is he in here anymore? No. It's, it's too hard, right? <laughs> anyway, um, the, the thing about the cloud for me, and, and saying that it's where I live, is things are so easy in the cloud. And I, my real house, okay, is, is in the countryside, and you know, I can drive off my drive on a morning, there's no traffic jams, there's nobody beeping their horns at me, there's nobody getting in the way, and it's just, it's like, it, it's the dream of living in the country. And I liken working in the cloud to living in the country, okay, maestro? I used to live here. And it's a great place, right? It really is a great place, and I enjoy living in the data center. Um, but it's a little bit like living in the city, don't get me wrong, some of you guys live in the city, and it has its pros. I totally get that, as does the data center, okay? And by the data center, I mean on-premises. Um, on-premises is always going to have a place. I mean, things like trading. I was talking to some of my old colleagues yesterday. Are you going to put trading in the cloud? I think not, okay? Or if you ever do, it'll be one of the very last things to go. And so on-premises has its place, right? Just like living in the city does, but... It's so hard to get anything done. I want to go from one place to another in a city, and it is hard work. That I want to get in my car and drive, and there's people in front of me. I can't get past them. My days of living in the on-premises world, you know, I wanted an application, right? And it was a few days for the storage guys to provision storage, and the, you know, the virtualization guys, that they could maybe spin up a VM in, a, a, in the same day for us if change control would allow it, of course. Um, it was just, it was hard to do things, okay, Maestro? However, living here, it's different. Maestro again. Of course, this is all behind the cloud, all right? So, you know, we've still got things to, 
to build and all of that, Maestro. What we're going to look at, though, is we're going to look at how to deploy what I think is some pretty awesome infrastructure using a text file. So, Maestro, oh, and again and again, one more. All right, Oop. no, no, keep going right. Right, one more time, it's demo time. Now then, it could go horribly wrong here or it could go horribly amazing. Um, I did record some videos just in case it doesn't work. Oh, I better probably kill that uh, presentation. Right, so can you guys see this? Right, see if I can make it a little bit bigger. I am going to deploy some absolutely awesome infrastructure with not that file, uh, this file here, OK? So I'm going to deploy some amazing infrastructure to Amazon Web Services using a text file, OK? So here I am in Amazon Web Services, and I'm going to go to CloudFormation. And if my amazing MiFi device works and my biscuits to the gods, thanks for not eating them, Rick, this is going to work. So I want to create highly available infrastructure, networks, firewalls, um, EC2 instances, all of that jazz. So I go click. I'm going to select a file. So I'm just going to choose this JSON file here. And I am going to have to scroll to the right. <coughs> Next. <coughs> and you know what? We're at Tech Unplugged, so we'll call it Tech Unplugged London. I'm going to deploy six Amazon EC2 instances. Now, I tried to give them cool names like Enrico and Arjan, and then I realized, you know, yeah, if I. Cool. Yeah, no, it's not. I realized that's not cool. So I just gave them normal names. Anyway, so next. Rick, I'd like you to come back for a second for me, please. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you while this actually deploys. But while it does, it's a bit gimmicky, I know, right? But um, I have got a stopwatch here, and I'm going to see how long this takes. So I'm going to go start. Can you just click create or de deploy or whatever it is, Rick? I think you can. Right. So um, if you scroll back kind of, oh, it's a touch screen. I might be able to do that. Look at that. Right. If you hit the refresh button every now and again, OK, I want to see how long this takes. Now, while it's doing it, right, I want to point out what I think from my experience and from talking with my old colleagues and things like that is the biggest problem with the cloud. Does anybody have any idea what they think I might think is the biggest problem with the cloud? OK. I think the biggest problem with the cloud is cost. OK. You see, in my last real job, when I didn't work for myself, um, we did this kind of rationalization project where we looked at all of the, the estate virtual machines. To, is Anthony in the room? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so you were there, right? And we were looking at virtual machines that hadn't been touched for years and storage LUNs that never had any storage put on them. You know what? We raked back loads of infrastructure. But the thing is, while that infrastructure was like still up and running and not actually doing anything, it didn't really cost the business anything. So we had this habit that, you know, we'd spin up virtual machines and we'd allocate LUNs and stuff like that to them. And it'd be like, oh, we, it doesn't matter if we don't use them. I mean, this, the physical servers and storage arrays are already there, right? If you do the same thing in the cloud and people do do the same thing in the cloud, I'll show you an example of me doing it in a second. Um, you spin up instances and you don't use them, guess what? My Microsoft and Amazon Web Services, they never forget to bill you for them. And I kid you not, people will spin up instances like their free virtual machines. And six months later, when they're looking at the bills and they're like, really? I mean, look, this stuff is generally more expensive than we often think it is anyway. But when you're spinning stuff up and they're not using it, duh. It, it's a big problem. A lot of businesses have problems with that. Um, this is like taking longer than I thought. I, I timed it last night. Well, hey, it was 1 minute 50 yesterday, so we're at 2 minutes 10 seconds. Now then, if you could stay there, please, Maestro, I would appreciate it. Can we, uh, let me see if we can flip back to the old slides. Uh, can you? Right, so, um, yeah, next slide, please, next slide. So this is what we've built, right? I don't know that everybody necessarily knows Amazon Web Services diagrams, right? Yes. Quick question. Yeah. You said um, you asked your colleagues. 
I asked my colleagues, yeah. What the problem was yes. with the cloud, yes. you said what you think the problem Because was. they said the same thing. Okay. So one of my old bosses, almost fully into Azure right now, and he feels that they need a full-time headcount just to manage and make sure that they're turning off old instances and deleting storage assigned to them and things like that. So he was in agreement, which is why I mention it here today. This isn't just the gospel according to Nigel. This is the gospel according to Nigel. And so, some other people, look, there are other challenges with the cloud as well, right? That is a big one. So two minutes, 10 seconds, I have built a data center. No, I haven't built a data center. I've built three data centers, OK? Hands up, who's built three data centers from scratch? Oh, yeah, all right, fair enough. <laughs> For the cameras, that was about five people, which, which is more than I thought, right? It took a lot longer than two minutes. Yeah. In my life, right, and I'm not as cool as these guys, I have never been at an organization where I have been involved in building three data centers. Plenty of organizations I've worked for have had two and what have you, and it's been cool and all that jazz, right? Two minutes, 10 seconds, I built three data centers, six networks. Three management subnets, these are just my naming conventions, right? Three production subnets. I've deployed instances across them all. I didn't put network access control lists on these networks. I could have done, um, but I did put security groups around them, a little bit like uh, instance firewalls. But I went from Maestro, that, to that, in, oh, the phone's gone off. Two minutes, 10 seconds. Now. Not only is that amazing for me, right, because back in the day, right, I used to use VirtualBox and things like that on my laptop when I'm learning and doing stuff. And I'd deploy Linux instances, and it'd be like half an hour to build, and it'd be like, next, 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 give it a host name, blah, blah, blah. Well, now, uh, uh, but what I used to be able to do is go and grab a, a slice of toast or make my lunch while I was building things. I can't even make and eat a slice of toast now while I'm racking up three data centers. Now, for me, that, that's pretty cool. But for you as an organization, for agility and for that ability to like go with the flow and the business comes and says, we need this and we need that and we don't need it anymore, you can tear it up and tear it down. You can spin it up and tear it down. So yes, please, Maestro. Um, and again, this is massive, right? Like I say, when you spin stuff up, make sure that you manage it and you tear it down. So what I'm going to do, El Ricatron. I like it, yeah. Uh, so I'm now going to ask my assistant here if he can click actions at the top here. Delete stack. Yes, please. And it's magically going to go away. Can I see the slides again, please? You did say you could do that. No, all right. Yeah, I think we need to go one more. But we want more demos. So if I can ask you just to take your seat again, please, Rick. Demo number two, whoa. That's all right then. So, demo number two, okay. Um, you can do PowerPoint better than me. I'm str oh no, here we go. Right, so, the Docker cloud platform, all right. Um, Docker are not a cloud provider. It plugs into, if I can probably show you here somewhere. Where is the home page? No, go away. Right, so if I come back here, I can see that my Docker account here is, drum roll, linked to Amazon Web Services and to Microsoft Azure. Okay, so I've, I've just got one node in Microsoft, in uh, Amazon Web Services at the moment that's being managed by Docker Cloud. But what I did a second ago is I just span up infrastructure, it was just virtual machines, right? This time I'm gonna deploy an application. So. Docker Cloud calls it a stack, and I'm going to say I want to create a stack, an application. Again, we're at the amazing Tech Unplugged, so I'm going to call it Tech Unplugged London, and I'm going to deploy it again, no word of a lie, with about 26 lines of the easiest code you've seen in your life, right? So what this is, is I'm going to deploy a load balancer. Each, each of these is a container or, or a microservice if you want to be you know, all hip and cool, right? So I'm going to deploy a microservice load balancer, a microservice results part of the application, blue vote, green vote, we'll see them in a second when I do the final um, demonstration, and then a back-end database, right? 
Now, let me copy that into here. Now, I'm going to click Create and Deploy. Rick, I, you, you don't have to do this, OK? If Rick doesn't want to do this, I'm going to take a volunteer. Right? I, I want somebody who thinks they can eat five cookies faster than I can deploy <laughs> a web-based application. Would, do, You've already had some. Does anybody want to think they can eat five cookies? I, I am on a time limit here. So if nobody volunteers, I'm going to pick somebody. Look at the ground now if you desperately don't want it to be you, Glassborough. <laughs> so I don't want to offend the demo gods. And if you're going to eat five cookies, I better leave one there for them. So no, 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 mate. You're taking center stage. We're going to, we're going to see if you can eat these five cookies. <laughs> You want to get them ready, because I'm going to click Create and Deploy here. D don't go first. You're cheating. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Right, so this is going. <laughs> and what we can, so if I s switch over to the Services tab here, right, I can see those five services that I showed you in the, uh, YAML, in the yeah, it was a YAML file earlier on. So the Redis container, that's, I wouldn't get confident. This one's the one that takes the longest to spin up. These will be up in a second. So it's still starting. Come on, who are you? <laughs> right, that's running. Come on. OK, the blue vote and the green vote, they're starting. They're going to whip you. Mate, you've got, you're not even trying. We I picked the wrong person here. Oh, man. So this, this took like uh, 18 seconds when I was running. Come on, running, 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 running. There we go. Now, the, the litmus test is going to, well, right. You, Martin, you're lost. Well done, mate. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it. So if it worked, what we have is a full-on web-based application here that you're all going to use as well. This is good stuff, right? Well, if it works, it is. So if I come back up to my stacks here, and I'm going to hit my new stack, and I'm looking for endpoints. So we're going to calculate some results. So this page will change as we put results in. Now we'll look at the load balancer. Here's the question, right? Rick, I'm sorry about this. Stay where you are. The question is, is the beautiful game called football or soccer? That we're talking round balls. You don't call it soccer, OK? So I am going to take this URL, and I'm going to paste it into Twitter against the Tech Unplugged hashtag, I believe. So if I go um, that. Uh, hash tech, oh, I'm so bad at typing, unplugged. Is that right? I would dearly appreciate it if you guys would follow that link and listen to me at the same time. Um, while I make my vote there for football, look at the results page. 100% of votes have gone to football, right? Um, if you check tech unplugged hashtag, you are welcome to go and vote. Now then, here is an example. So I, I, I'm a good guy for um, Enrico and Ayan and these guys, and I like to prepare in advance, right? So actually, a little bit more than a month ago, I tried that voting app, which I've ripped off from um, Docker or somebody, right? I don't think they care. And I spun it up in Docker Cloud, and it worked, and I was like, I am the business. And then I went and played golf or something and uh, got my bill from Docker, and I'm like, hello. <laughs> Whew. Didn't turn it off. One node, five containers, and it cost me $44. How stupid of me. Oh, no. Right. Um, so what I'm going to do now, real quick, there are not going to be time for questions at the end. And who can? Whoa. Come on. Um, what I'm going to do is, oh, no. You know, I was going to, so uh, there was a green and a blue voting app, and I was going to switch over like a green-blue system. Never mind. I'm out of time. I've had the one-minute warning. So let me back to slides. Um, we were going to have more demos, more, 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 but we're not now. And this is what I was going to show you. Any questions, right? Why does that not fit on the page? It's probably a good thing it doesn't. <laughs> Normally, I'd say I don't have any answers. The problem is, I usually do, and they're all rubbish. So um, if you do, uh, do we have time for one question or not? Yeah. Well, you just said one minute. Like, yeah. All right. The, the demos are finished, so I'm going to enjoy. Does anybody have any questions? Because I think Julian can answer them if you do. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> For me. Are you pulling yeah. my leg? Sorry, sorry. Come on. So I, I basically, in 
impressed by his triumph, or are you impressed by the fact that you got the main API and the main API? Both, okay. The API and the automation tools and stuff like that, um, mega impressed by, yeah. Um, but also, I am impressed by the public cloud. I think for businesses as well, especially um, the Azure cloud. Um, but the, the whole idea that you can, you've got this infrastructure that you can just spin up so quickly and you don't have to have made an upfront capital investment, right? I'll, I'll be the first to say, um, I don't think the public cloud is going to take over the world, but I do think it's going to have a solid future and it will sit alongside on-premises. Because um, I, I think the general consensus is that if you can run your on-premises infrastructure very highly utilized, it's quite a bit cheaper than the cloud. But that's, in my experience, that's quite tricky to do. Um, so I, I don't know, I'm waffling a bit, but I'm impressed by both, definitely. Does that answer? Anybody else? No, yeah. So I think there was two questions. Is there a line of business behind that, and does anybody do it? I think yes, and I don't know to the second answer, actually. I probably should, but because I don't work for a company these days, and it, I mean, it's easy for me to manage my infrastructure and instances and stuff. I've not looked into it. So I don't know on that one. Sorry. Anyone else? Good idea. Yeah. Let's do it. We've got a question in the back corner yeah, there, there. I, my I new beautiful don't. assistant. I know you can, but oh, and I, don't, I can never answer your questions either. <laughs> no. Uh, you don't have the password again. No, it's not. Uh, so the problem with the container is that, you know, the data, in data centers, there's a lot of legacy applications, mm. right? So how long do you think it will take developers to actually build the cloud apps? cloud native apps and to be able to transition what we have in the data center today into, you know, a container world right and up. so on. Because that's the biggest challenge we have. Rock on. Yeah. Who's an enterprise guy in here who's like a big works for a big business? Hiya. Yeah, for those guys it's gonna take ages. And the legacy applications, the line of business applications, let's be fair, right? not going to change over, overnight. It'll take a long time. And I think like public cloud sitting alongside on-premises infrastructure, we'll see containers and these new architectures and new models sit alongside the legacy stuff for a very long time. Um, I think new companies and startups, and I've consulted with a couple, um, they're obviously not interested in the legacy and they're going all in on platforms like AWS and Docker and you know, using tectonic Kubernetes packaged and stuff, yeah. Um, so it's going to be a mixture. I think the enterprise is very slow to do anything, so the legacy stuff will stick around for a very long time. But then the, I think as persistent storage technologies start plugging into um, things like Docker, then it will be more realistic to move some of your legacy applications across. It will take a while, I think. Any more? Are we done? Hey. Thank you.